I hope it's videotaping. No, that's okay. I'd like to welcome you all to our outdoor wedding in Buckhorn. <laughs> when I was coming in, someone was saying, oh, it's so unfortunate it's snowing today, but I'm thinking, it's a good thing for you guys it's snowing, because you wouldn't be having this much fun otherwise. <laughs> and I hear most people here have a crush on Adam. <laughs> Even the men. <laughs> My name is Bill Peacock, and uh, 25 years ago, I used to be the minister down the street at Knox United Church. And and every week, I would come up here for services. So I'm thinking there may not be people here who have been here for 26 years. Maybe some of the staff. But, um, but hi to those in the remembrance of those who are here from days gone by. And, um, and, and just so you know, our, our ring bearer today is Jacob. <laughs> Thanks, Jacob, for being the ring bearer today. <laughs> okay, so I just made the ring bearer cry. <laughs> okay, great. It's got the ring off. I would like to welcome you to Adam and Holly's wedding. So, how many weddings have we had here at Blue Ridge? Two. This is officially the second one. I was either he's telling me two or peace. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'm thinking we both could have been around during the 70s, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's believed that we do not live in isolation, nor do we build relationships absent from others. It's important that as we come here together this day, we're surrounded with words like at the back, happiness, where good friends gather, how absolutely of this day. We come together out of this spirit of love and mutual respect. Holly and Adam, you've made known your desire to be married and no one has shown just cause why you may not. If either of you know any lawful impediment why you can't be married, I ask you now to declare it. <laughs> And no, you come be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a hand waving at the back. <laughs> Would you bow with me in prayer? <laughs> Loving God in whom we live, move, and have our being, grant to us purity of heart, strength of purpose, that in your light we may see light, and in your service we may be free. There's an absolutely familiar passage of scripture that's used at most weddings, and you might have had it at your own wedding. Because I'm thinking it might have been a year or two before that you were married. Or 10 or 20 or 30 or 60. <laughs> a few years ago. The Apostle Paul wrote uh, to the new Christian community in the 
grand city of Corinth. And they're trying to figure out, how do you build a church? And many of them wanted to build the church on symbols of power, of authority, and stuff like that. And, and he writes back to them and says, no, that's not how you build a church. And, and what we know is the analogy is, that's not how you build a, a marriage. And so Paul wrote back and he said to them, love. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or greedy. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at the wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, even after 60 years. Love, love never ends. So again, if you think for a moment, we were kind of thinking at this moment, we're out on a peninsula, outdoors, hoping that it might be a nice sunny day, but, and a little snow, little. We are gathered here to witness the marriage of this man and this woman and to ask God to bless them. By our presence here, we accept responsibility for supporting them in the new relationship into which they are about to enter. We're called to rejoice in their happiness, to be patient when they make mistakes, to help in times of trouble, to remember them in our Timing the thing shuts up. <laughs> Your marriage. It's a nice phrase. Your marriage joins you for life in a relationship so intimate it profoundly affects the whole of your being. It offers you the promise of a love that is true and mature. But such a love requires that you commit your lives to one another freely and without reserve for the sake of a deeper and a wider life together. Seek to become one in mind, heart, and body. Trust in God's love and the love and support of your family and friends gathered here. And you will have that support to guide you on your way. Polly, will you have Adam to be your husband? She didn't even hesitate. <laughs> 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 you notice that? Adam, would you have Polly to be your wife? Yes. Would you pass over your bouquet? And if you'd like to hold your hand. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Oh, <laughs> now, Adam, there may be someone here who has a little trouble hearing, so you've got to do this good and loud. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> In the presence of God and before these witnesses. In the presence of God and before these witnesses. I, Adam, take you, Holly. I, Adam, take you, Holly. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. And to be faithful to you alone. And to be faithful to you alone. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. That was great. It looks so much shorter on paper. <laughs> Polly, if you'd repeat after me. In the presence of God and before these witnesses. In the presence of God and before these witnesses. I, Polly, take you, Adam. I, Polly, take you, Adam. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have. To have. 